we're going to look now at how if we were given a battery you will do this as a, an assessed practical how we go about finding its internal resistance and its emf as well the short answer as to how you find the emf just put a voltmeter across it because you remember a voltmeter has got infinite resistance and therefore if the voltmeter has got infinite resistance there's no current and therefore the voltage across the battery is the emf used to be a problem electronic voltmeters really do have a very very high resistance high enough that we can ignore any current flowing through them it wasn't true back in the day when neither's the you know the old-fashioned meter with a needle Internal resistance, a bit more difficult as ever we're trying to do it with the back, um, with a graph. So we take our cell and we connect it to a variety of resistances. We can either do that um, by having a variable resistor or using lots of different resistances. It doesn't actually matter how much resistance there is. Sorry, it doesn't, we don't need to know the amount of resistance. It, it doesn't matter what resistors we use. And we take a voltage and we create a graph. Sorry, start off with make a table, wouldn't we, of um, voltage and current. And then we plot a graph. We plot the graph, imagining current is the um, independent variable, V is the dependent variable. I actually set that by setting the resistance. So what's the graph going to look like? Well, we know when the current is zero, that's the EMF. I'll show you another way of showing that's the EMF in a moment. And what we said in the first video is the more current there is, the less voltage there is. So we get this decreasing line like that. And that would be all our readings. So we have to go through this slightly tricky process again of relating the graph to Y equals MX plus C. And uh, in the last video, I derived this equation. I'm just going to write it in a slightly um, different order. So hopefully what you can see now is that's our Y variable. That's our X variable. That's our intercept. I've already said that that's the EMF. And that makes the gradient equal to minus R. This crops up sometimes in the exam, and I think that it's one of those things where sometimes A-level physics, it feels like impossibly hard, and what am I supposed to do? When this crops up in the exam, there'll be some people who are just really naturally talented at physics. Oh, yeah, I remember that. But for most students, what happens is they fall into one or two camps. Students who saw this in a lesson, in a video, and forgot it, get no marks. Students... We've got had some systems in place, got organised, did some revision. Oh, right, yeah, that's easy. Find the gradient. Gradient's three, internal resistance. Gradient's minus three, internal resistance must be three ohms. Just see what the intercept is. Job done. So don't be, you know, don't be defeatist. With practice, you can get there. Okay.